let's talk about notation here. I've drawn vector w in standard position, meaning its initial point is at zero, and it goes to some x, y point, which I'm calling very strangely now w1, w2. How do I know that's an x, y point? Because I have these curvy brackets. The curvy brackets mean that this is a point. So curvy brackets means we're talking about an x, y point. Now to get to that point, I had to go x component and then y component. So I can talk about a vector w being made up of x component w1 comma y component w2. So when you see these crimped brackets like this, you know you're referring to a vector. The first number is the x component. I'll write x comp there. And the second number is your y comp. Look where they are in the graph. That is your displacement from initial point to terminal point. We're talking about directed line segments. That's what we're representing vectors with. This first number here is x component, which we call w1, if we're talking about vector w. If it was vector u, it would be u1. If it was vector v, it would be v1. And w2 is going to be the vertical component. If it were vector u, it would be u2. And if it was vector v, it would be v2. Notice one other thing is if I have a zero vector that starts at the origin and also stops at the origin, we would say that the, the zero vector looks like this. We'd say it's a zero vector. So its x component is zero and y component is zero. That would be the zero vector. So the zero vector has the initial point and terminal point right on top of each other. It doesn't go anywhere. So let's kick some knowledge officially. If I have this vector v from point p to q, I can say that vector p q is equal to v. I'd just much rather talk about vector v than p q. Notice that does mean that we're going from p to q. Look at my arrowhead. It tells me where my terminal point is. Well, vector p q, its components would be x final, which is q1, minus x initial, which is p1, comma, y final, which is q2, minus y initial, which is p2. Now, look what happens here when we do q1 minus p1. q1 minus p1 up here, that is v1, or the x component of vector v. And what is this thing here? Q2 minus P2. Well, that's the final Y coordinate minus the initial Y component. Component. So this is Q2 minus P2. In other words, we call this V2. That's why I'm saying this is the X component of vector V and the Y component of vector V. It's a lot of symbols just to say Y final, sorry, X final minus X initial gives you V1. And y final minus y initial gives you v2, the x component and the y component when we make our right triangle there. And that is vector v. Vector v is x component, y component. It's a vector, so I put those, uh, those components in crimp brackets. What do the components do? They are essentially directions, and this is so important to understanding vectors. V1 and V2 are simply directions that tell you how to get from the initial point to the terminal point of a directed line segment. How do I go from here to here? Oh, go this far in the X, that's V1, the X component, and go this far in the Y, that's V2, the Y component. A plus in the X sends us to the right. A plus in the Y sends us up. A minus in the X sends us to the left. A minus in the Y component sends us down. So what about the magnitude of V? How big is this distance here? I'm just using the Pythagorean theorem. The x component squared plus the y component squared. x final minus initial squared plus y final minus y initial squared. It's just the distance formula, but we're using p1, p2, and q1, q2 instead of x initial, uh, y initial, x final, y final. So I'm taking my x component squared plus my y component squared, and I'm square rooting it. That's how I find how big that distance is, that distance from initial point to terminal point. By the way, if you find your magnitude is one, well, that's a special case. We call that
the unit vector, one unit of a vector, or the unit vector is a magnitude of one.